and welcome back to our podcast. Last week, we talked about how to prepare for a detox or a cleanse. And so this week, we're going to talk more about cleansing methods, different tools and things that you can use um, to help enhance your detox, to help it be more effective. I know um, for me, I like using different things like tongue cleansing, dry skin brushing, um, castor oil packs, as well as the herbs um, that we talk about. Um, did I say tongue cleansers? Tongue so cleansers we can even yeah. talk about oil pilling and yeah. uh, things like that. So where would you like to start? Let's talk about oil pulling. That's kind of a hot topic, I think. It's an Ayurvedic technique. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you uh, traditionally, they use sesame oil. In India, that's but also you can also use olive oil, coconut oil. Basically, what happens when you swish with this oil for 10 to 20 minutes, it absorbs a lot of the bacteria in the mouth. And when you spit it out, of course, the bacteria go, and of course, do not spit this in a sink, you'll stop yes. it up. Spit <laughs> it in a garbage can or out on the ground somewhere. But I've heard from miraculous healing benefits, I heard that some people it lowers their blood pressure. It helps protect the mouth from cavities. I mean, I don't know if a lot of these are true as far as like I've heard, of, but it does help you help your mouth. I know that much because people who have healed small cavities by oil pulling mm -hmm. anecdotally, I don't, but their dentist would confirm it. So I've heard that too. Yeah. yeah. They can help with some, even some strengthening of the teeth um, and things like that. Yeah. I do like oil pulling. And I also like tongue cleansing. So that's something that I just started maybe six or seven months ago. Oh, and yeah. um, so I don't have problems with taste, but I've heard that sometimes people, as they get older, they lose the sensitivity in their taste buds and the oil, I should have, well, I forgot we're on a podcast. You can't see, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you just put it on your tongue at the back of your, the base of your tongue and you just pull it forward and then you rinse it off. But it, it, it can be kind of gross, you know, with all your yeah. scraping off the surface of your tongue. We don't think about things as building up on your tongue. We actually don't talk much about the tongue. I heard, was it Dr. Joel Kahn, maybe? No, might have been Dr. William Lee. I don't remember. We were talk, they were talking about how your fat absorb, your tongue absorbs fat first that uh when people gain weight if they gain fat it happens in the tongue first which um is so creepy wow. which is why people when they start to snore that's a sign that they're gaining weight and because the tongue it gets fat and then it kind of relaxes when you sleep it can cause uh snoring so that can be a good sign if your partner or someone else in your household says you know you're, you're starting to snore that can be a sign that uh you're gaining fat. So that was totally off topic. Wow. Um, but That's amazing. That though. Was, yeah. Um, but I like the tongue clean, cleanser to pull things off of the tongue. Um, I know a, a lot of times I'll do pH testing and you can you test your saliva and just pulling all that off will help um, lower the acidity of your mouth too. So you're cleansing it with the, the uh, have you ever used a tongue cleanser? I haven't. No, I've always used a toothbrush or whatever. So this was good yeah. for me. So another tool that I like is, is dry skin brushing. Have you done dry skin brushing? <clears throat> I have. <clears throat> uh, what br They usually recommend a brush with natural uh, fibers, right? Like Yeah, natural bristles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I got this kit. Um, it was off of Amazon. You know, I'm sure you can find it in other places for those of you who don't like Amazon, but it actually has three different types of brushes and even you can swap out the handles. And so it has a really small brush um, for the face and it even has like a little map to show you different methods, you know, which ways to you do little circles on your face to do flow around the eyes and things like that. Um, there is a type of glaucoma that is um and runs in my family. And so I'm like very, I'm always looking at ways to add circulation around the face and the eyes. Um, but then you can even rub it around your lymph nodes here. It's a nice small brush, it's very gentle, but then it has a harder bristles and a long handle that you can use to do with your feet. So I think you're supposed to start at the bottom of your feet and your toes and do circles like on the joints and smooth muscles. And you're moving, always moving towards the heart. So you move from your 
toes to the feet to the heel to the leg to the knee you're working your way up all to the um, heart and then there's a medium bristle brush for your abdomen and things like that so it's not as harsh as the one that's on your feet I really like it but it just helps to move the lymph because our lymph system does not have a pump like our heart so it's very important that we move anytime we move contract our muscles that helps to move the lymph well the dry skin brushing does the same thing and so it helps to move the lymph and so your lymph is like your septic system um, toxins get pulled from the bloodstream emptied into the lymph system and get flushed out into lymph nodes so when, the only time we really hear about lymph and lymph nodes is when cancer when we hear the cancer is spread to the lymph nodes then everybody's like oh that's that's bad we don't want cancer in the lymph nodes because it moves all throughout the body and so dry skin brushing helps to uh, move the lymph and get it flushed so it's um, excreted from the body so what's your experience with uh, dry skin brushing I usually do it before I take a shower. That's one way I learned to do it is mm -hmm. go ahead and go through your dry skin brushing and then do some hot and cold therapy while you're in the shower because it, you know, hot and cold therapy increases blood flow. And it also helps me the lymphatic system because like Jennifer's saying is the lymphatic system is one of the most neglected systems. We, you don't, you don't, a medical doctor will never talk about it. The only ones we talk about are the natural people like us, but you have to do things to keep the system running smoothly because if it starts to stagnate, any kind of blockage in the body, whether it's your bowels, your lymphatic system, all these lead eventually to some kind of a disease. So anyway, back to my story, I do maybe a 10 minute dry skin brush and take a hot shower and then end the shower with a little bit of cold water. and. Um, I always do it when I'm doing cleanses too. If I'm doing a juice cleanse or raw food, whatever, but yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's important. I think so too. I'm so glad you talked about the hot and cold therapy. I think that that's something that is really growing um, in popularity right now. More people are hearing more and more about it, but it's something that Dr. Christopher talked a lot about and Dr. Schultz too, you know, that um, it's like a, like a pumping action, you know, the mm -hmm. hot, your blood flows to the surface, the cold, your blood draws away from the surface, turn the hot back on, it goes back to the surface. And so it's great if you have uh, wounds or inflammation somewhere, you can do it in that particular area or yeah. in the shower. It's great too. I think I even heard Dr. Tom O'Brien talk about it, doing it on the top of your head um, to get circulation to the brain. It might not have been Dr. O'Brien. I'm thinking that's who it was. Um, but, and Dr. Schultz said, you know, if it's breast cancer, hot and cold therapy yeah. on the breast. And so anytime you can do that, um, I've heard Dr. Is, is Dr. Barbara O'Brien. Um, have you heard her? Um, she oh, has uh, a uh, lot of herbalist. videos. O'Neill. Yeah, Barbara yeah. Barbara yeah. O'Neill. Yeah. Yes. Yes. She talks a lot about that too. You know, they drop, um, do a hot therapy and then they dive into a cold lake or something yeah like that just to help with the blood flow but i completely forgot about that as part of a cleansing system so i'm so great so glad it, that you brought that up it used um, to be very popular yes yes um so something else that i really like are castor oil packs i love yeah castor oil packs. And so Dr. Christopher talked about it with the flannel, um, using it anywhere you have inflammation and even sore joints and things like that. But I love it during a cleanse. Number one, I will put it on the lower abdomen to help open up the eliminatory pathways to make sure that things are, are moving out. It just helps to draw um, to help with elimination. But then during a cleanse, I like to do one day over the liver to help pull things from the liver and then the next day over the colon just to make sure those things are are moving out appropriately yeah cash oil packs are very effective i had a client that was having gallbladder trouble gall pains and she called me one night i said try a cash oil pack she called me back 30 minutes later it's like it took the pain away i was like told you <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's great it uh it helps to relieve stagnation it's another like if you have stagnation in the liver it helps to loosen that up so yes yeah and some people wear theirs at night um i actually have an affiliate link with the uh, queen of thrones i love queen of thrones theirs is a cold pressed organic 
um, castor oil in a dark glass bottle. So, you know, it hasn't been, uh, if it's heat treated at all, and then you have rancid oil, you don't want to deal with rancid yeah. oil. But they also have a pack that protects your clothing as well because it can oh, get wow. messy with the flannel and the plastic. Um, so I really like like that. And they have loads of videos too. So for those of you who want to learn more about castor oil, and um, Queen of Thrones is a great resource you can use my link you don't have to use my link um if um to learn more about castor oil packs but i, I do love them and so people will hesitate and um, with that as well because i'll tell them to put them on their lower abdomen and they're afraid that they'll have to go to the bathroom right away but it's very safe and very gentle yeah yeah it's a and you can wear it anytime like for me i get up and i wear one every morning i get up every morning and i'll if i don't use one of those castor oil packs and I'll tie like my bathrobe around to hold it on. Um, but some people will sleep with it on at night. Some people will put it on at night while they're watching TV. And so you can just, however you want to wear it. Some people will put them on their neck. I remember a video with Dr. Christopher, David Christopher, where they put it on their child wrapped around the, the neck for the thyroid or strep throat, maybe. I'm wow. a castor oil pack. Yeah. So I'm getting off topic for cleansing with that. Um, though that would cleanse, help to cleanse the thyroid. Another tool that I like are enemas. Have you ever done an enema? I, I have. Now this is <laughs> this one of those things that scares people. Yes. But it's not yes. that bad. It's really, I mean, I'm not, it is not that bad. It is not that bad. And it's something that I mentioned in my create program. So I have a program too, where people go through a detox and they, they can choose, you know, maybe your detox is just eating whole food plant-based or maybe you're going raw. Or maybe you're going to three-day juice cleanse, or maybe you're going even deeper. And so I started coffee enemas last May. Don't do them all the time. Only do them when I'm doing a, a deep cleanse. Um, but it's it's amazing. It is absolutely amazing. And so um, I went to the Living Foods Institute in Atlanta, not far from you. Yes, yes. And there we had to do wheatgrass enemas and so that was really weird and that's where I actually learned because I had heard about them before and I was kind of curious because I knew they were using cleansing and they actually I mean they didn't show you how to do it but they were <laughs> very uh you, you knew what to do when you got home after yeah. they they talked about them but it's very not only does it help to like you have two different things you can do Dr. Christopher talked about it too you know you can use herbs you can use wheatgrass yeah. you can use water um different different mediums in there to cleanse but you can you can do a short one that just cleanses the bottom of the colon just to make sure that the pathway is open or you can do one where you hold it for 15 to 20 minutes so that your body absorbs the nutrients from the enema and then you release and so i guess it depends on what your needs are at the time um if you just need to be opening those pathways then you know just a quick water enema can be useful um you, if you have a certain condition then certain herbs that are specific to condition that'd be great to make an herbal tea to use in the enema or like i did the coffee and that one there's controversy around the coffee enema um but um, something about that pathway activates the liver to create glutathione, which is an antioxidant that is um, specific to the liver. It's um, wonderful for aiding and healing the liver. And so coffee enemas um, help with that. Now, our disclaimer, we are not medical providers. Um, I am not telling anyone to do this. I do not diagnose, treat, or prescribe. I am not telling you to do this. I'm just telling you to do your own research if this is something that you are curious and learning more about so in your experience with the enemas did you have did you use it water or tea or or anything specific i used uh, a little bit of catnip tea in my water because it helps to relax the colon because i was you know the first time i was a little tense mm -hmm. and if you are tense about it i recommend adding things like catnip or chamomile or what you know even a little, a little bit of lobelia and it helps to relax your colon when it goes in Yes, and I it love helps. Those. Yeah, it helps with cramps. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's what I use. I use. I like to use a little bit of herbal tea like that. So, and I have one uh -huh. of those bags. You know, you hang it. You actually can hang it up as a gravity bag. Mm -hmm. That way, you can kind of administer it yourself. I and mean, there's a lot of. Uh, I think there's another one you can do. Like you buy it for your toilet, and it sits on your toilet, and you can do the enema 
while you're on the toilet so you can do it all by yourself i mean you could do it by that way you don't have to get up when you have to expel you can just i can't think it's like maybe it's called a kalima board i think it's called kalima oh, I've, yeah i've heard of that i haven't seen one yeah yeah mm -hmm. to make it easier but i mean i i um you can do them by yourself pretty it's kind of mm -hmm. I, I had my wife help me because we were both doing them at the time we were doing the the incurables program just to really give it a test run because I don't like to recommend anything unless I've done it, you know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I have to do it myself before I recommend it for somebody else. Yeah. 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 I've always done mine myself. Um, I do. I have a stainless steel bucket for mine that you hang on like the shower head. Yeah. And you, the problem with that is I love that it's stainless steel. You can't see the levels. And so... Uh -huh. You know, you just have to administer as much as you think you yeah. need, and then you can get up and check and look, or you can just lay there. Like I lay in the tub, like backwards, like my head down towards the drain. Um, and I lay on my right side, I'll lay on the left side to fill up. Then I'll lay on my back and massage the stomach to get it yeah. all moving. I'll go counterclockwise on my stomach. And then I'll lay on the right side and just practice deep breathing and relaxation to hold it now i do do a short enema first and then i'll do a longer one so i do a short one first yeah. to eliminate make sure everything's out and then i'll do a longer one just to help absorb the nutrients yeah that so that may be a lot more information than anybody needed to know but <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about tools for cleansing so just pick the ones that suit you that feel right to you now every time i go through a cleanse um, i do like to do a seasonal cleanse i do add a new tool so these aren't things that i've done every single time it's just different tools that i've tried um just to make sure that i know what i'm talking about when i'm talking to a client so that they feel comfortable using these tools too so i was trying to think was there what have we left off well i like uh deep breathing deep breathing helps move the lymphatic system yes yes like 10 minutes a day just relax and breathe in through your nose exhale through your mouth yes yeah we have to rest and repair Yep. Your body repairs when you are resting. And so good sleep, you know, don't over-exercise while you're going through a cleanse. Um, give your time by, give your body time to rest and yes. repair. Good sleep hygiene is very important. I think it's an important thing that you just said. Like I've had people on a juice cleanse and they want to still exercise really hard. That's very stressful because you don't have, and I mean, you're really, when you're on a cleanse, you do not have the energy you have when you're on solid food. I don't care what anybody says. Some people tell you, you'll have more energy on a juice fest. I don't. I don't know about you. I don't either. I don't either. So. And when it was something we didn't talk about, some of the effects. So like I just started mine today, day one. I'm, I'm happy, feel good, right? Tomorrow, yeah. I'm probably going to be cranky. Oh, yeah. Tomorrow, I'll be cranky. I'll be tired. Day three is when the enzymes start to build up in your body. We haven't really talked about the science behind it. So, but day three, I'll get over a hump. And so yes. once I get through day three, then I'm like, oh, I could do this forever. Maybe mm -hmm. not, but, <laughs> but you feel a lot better. For me, <laughs> I love food. I love chewing. And so by the time I get to day three, I'm like, I want some food. Give me something to chew. And so <laughs> that's just how I am. And it's not because my body needs it. It's just me and my the way i am i love food so <laughs> well here's one tip you can actually freeze some of your juice like a popsicle mm. and you can eat it and it kind of helps you know mm -hmm. okay but yeah i'm with you a lot of people after a few days on the liquid diet they're like oh <laughs> i want to chew something yes yeah or they yes. want something warm <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Well, like the broth exactly yeah, yeah. the broth yes. Yes. And then we're coming out of the cleanse. We didn't talk about this, but I think it's very important to, oh, yeah. to be gentle, you know, start with soups. Don't, yeah. <laughs> don't finish your cleanse going to Dairy Queen. Oh God, no. Just don't do it. <laughs> don't undo all the hard work you just did. 
A, B, that's going to make you really sick. I mean, you'll be mm -hmm. shocked at how when you add those fat foods back in, the inflammatory foods, how they affect you. And they were affecting you that way before you just kind of got numb to it. And now you're yep. going to be a little bit more sensitive to it. And so does that mean don't do the cleanse? No, you <laughs> don't want to be eating those inflammatory foods. And so start um, with you know, fruits. Um, fruits are very gentle, um, even though they have a lot of fiber. Start with your fruits and broths and soups, and then add in some salads and more whole foods um, from there. So people think that when we eat the way that we eat, that all we do is eat salads all day, but that's not the truth. Um, yeah. If you follow me, you'll see I eat, I eat pretty gourmet uh, raw vegan. Um, mm -hmm. I just like, I love food. I love being creative in the kitchen. I know that's not right for everybody, um, but you know, don't think that you are going to be stuck just eating lettuce and tomatoes. <laughs> yeah, God, no, I no. couldn't stick to that either. <laughs> no, and it's not healthy. No, I, mean, no. I might have a couple of vitamins and minerals in there, but not a complete profile. <laughs> so you need to, to make sure that you are eating all the different things. I love Dr. Greger's um, Daily oh, yeah. Dozen. If you are just starting on a plant-based diet and want to make sure you're getting all the nutrients you need, um, go to nutritionfacts.org or download Dr. Greger's app, um, the Dirty Dozen app. It's fabulous. Um, just make sure that you're eating your nuts and seeds and grains and beans, as well as all your fruits and vegetables. And like me, greens three times a day, greens, 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 all your protein, all your vitamins and your minerals. Yeah, I think greens are one of the healthiest foods for a human. Yes, yes, so. yes. Did you and have you anything? Go ahead. go ahead. Huh? Sorry. Oh, I didn't mean that to. Uh, do I have anything to wrap up with you're going to ask? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I tell you what, if you've been thinking about doing a cleanse for a few years, this could be your year, 2023. Give it a go. I mean, try it out for yourself, you know, and if you want help, you can get with Jennifer, you can get with me or somebody else that you like better than us. I don't know, <laughs> but try it. You, you'll be surprised how good you will feel. Yeah. And I don't recommend this to lose weight, but if you're trying to lose weight, a juice cleanse, it will come off like magic. Yeah. so yeah and you'll just feel so vibrant oh yeah i agree yes yeah all right well thank you for joining us today i think next week we're going to be talking about self-care which is very oh. important not only during cleansing but for our overall health as well